hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Secret to Success podcast. We strive to bring you the top leaders in their industries so you can learn their secrets to success, so you can grow and build your businesses, be prosperous, and live the dreams that you are so looking to live. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at info at the ATSJR.com for more information about the ATSJR companies and to find out more about how to live your dreams and reach that middle class exit and live the life that you were supposed to live. Freedom is abundance and abundance is freedom. Let's all go live it. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of the Secret to Success podcast. Have you ever said something needs to change? Help me, somebody. We talking today. Kiara, I'm coming out the gates fighting. Have you ever said, I don't know what's going on with my life, but God, whatever you're doing, you need to undo it. Have you ever said to yourself, I don't know why everybody else get to get that, and I don't. Help me, somebody. I came to talk today. Have you ever said, why is it they get a new car every two years and my car just got repossessed? I need some real folk today. I ain't going to take them to 15 minutes. I hope we have a discussion for the next 30. Have you ever said, why am I 40 and not married? 50 and not married. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Lord have mercy. Chris, watch my car. Watch my tires. You ever said, why am I a good man and ain't got no woman? Because the problem has always been you. You see, what we like to do, my brothers and my sisters, is we like to blame everybody else but us. We like to look in the mirror and say, mirror, tell me who's the sexiest woman or man alive. And the mirror say you. And then we walk out of there and we be evil. Or we be good. Or something in between. Here's the truth, my friends. In this life, and you should write this down, you always get what you want. Nothing less, nothing different, nothing more. It is at this point, I'm about to knock the meat off the bones since they finally let me teach. Five years it's been going on, Michelle. I finally get to teach. They finally, they, they don't like me over here. They don't like me. They don't let me get on here. The ladies, they take care of this. They don't like me over here. <laughs> Five years. I finally get to teach for a third time. You've always gotten what you want. Write that down. Nothing less. Nothing more. And nothing different. Did you get that pay raise? You either did or you did not. But the truth is, it's what you wanted. <gasps> And right there, I lost my whole crowd, Chris. The only person who's still in the crowd is my grandmother. She in heaven. She's still listening. Everybody else I lost. Every bad thing or good thing that's ever happened in your life, you got because you wanted it. Now, here's the good news. Here's the punchline. You just, because you do stuff like this, is what Tim was saying in the chat. <laughs> that's, why I that's why I don't let me talk right here. <clears throat> Here's the punchline. The punchline, Bastien, is very simple. Michelle, you just got to trust that the source in you, the God in you, the Holy Spirit, is not leading you to a place that you can't trust. That's the punchline. That's how we're going to end. That's how we're going to end. You can't keep saying all this bad stuff keep happening to me and still believe in God. You can't do both. Both of them can't happen. 
at some point, you got to recognize all that bad stuff in your life is the most gentle, kind thing God could do to you in that moment. Morning by morning. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had a church folk. New mercies you receive. Let's keep on talking. If you just joined us, what we're talking about is it has always, no, you have always been your problem. That's what we're talking about, Chris. I'm almost, I ain't going to take long because I'm, I'm looking forward to inciting you. I don't mean exciting you as in I-N-C-I-T-I-N-G. I want to anger you to a conversation. Inspire you to one. Number one, every single time in your life, you've always got what you want. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing different. Every single time you've ever done something, every single time you lost that woman, lost that man, lost that job promotion, it's because you really wanted it. Let me explain. This is how it works. Y'all ready? Ain't nobody ready. This is how it works. Either little you wanted it or big you wanted something greater, which made you be in your place. All of you ought to be blessed for the locked doors in your life because big you closed some small opportunities you thought was big that did not serve you. I'm talking to you right now, Kiara. Show up. Show him. Some of that stuff y'all keep trying to get is lower than your worth. But it's the most important thing in your life. Help me somebody. No matter what you've done, no matter what's happened to you, big you has always guided you. Holy Spirit always guided you. God has always guided you. And Every place in your life right now, y'all, that's where you're supposed to be. I lost, I already lost my whole crowd. Now I lost the crowd that was coming tomorrow. What if I told you that you write where God wants you to be in no place different? That the hurricanes have blown your feet and they've blown your feet right where you should be. And that every financial problem you have is the financial problem you both deserve and the financial problem that gets you to all the money you want. Rewind. Press play. If you're just joining us, what I'm talking about is everything has always been your fault. Always. Now that you understand, well, you understand that, but now that you heard me say that, number one, you, sir, you, ma'am, only have in your life what you exactly wanted, not nothing less, not nothing different, not nothing more, and you need to respect that. Every divorce, you got that. You wanted it. Don't matter if you believe that every argument. You got that. You wanted it. No matter if you believe that. The problem becomes, which one of you wanted that? Was it your little conscious mind that made you override your prosperity? Or was it big Katrina that said, I want something greater. So tad this up. Because I done fooled around and settled in something that wasn't worthy of me. Woo! I'm talking up in this place today. Oh, Chris, I done fooled around and talked. Some of y'all holding on to stuff God trying to tear apart. But I ain't going to bother nobody, Charmone. I'm going to let some of y'all make it. I'm almost done. Some of y'all got the stuff in your life. Some of the hell in your life, it ain't because you're a bad person. It's because you want big things and you settled to be a low person. And Big You said, I'm about to tear this up. Mm, 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 mm. 
that man you love? Oh, Lord, I'm meddling with not bestie. That woman you love, you ain't supposed to be with them. That's why you got so much hell. Because big you say, no, not like this. It's still on, Bestie? Did they cut me off? Is it still on? It's still on? Okay, Bestie, you smile. It must still be on. I got to check. I got to check. You know, feds be cut off my mic, Michelle. They be cutting off my mic. Everything that you have in your life right now, you want it. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing different. That's never going to change. And every great teacher has come before you and said that same thing. So is a man thinketh. So is he. Number two. Oof, Lord have mercy. Even if it's opposite of your wishes, you still wanted it. Oh, I told you I was coming for the I was coming for the throat. Every time, every time they it's got, listen, I gotta give it to y'all because they're not gonna let me get back on this platform until another two years from now. So I gotta give it to you. All right. They don't, it's been five years. They let me get on here three times. This this is the third time ever. You know, so I'm like every 1.1 years I get to jump on here. So I got to give it to you every time I get here. Even if it's the opposite of what you want, Michelle, it is what you want. It's called the law of opposites. Everybody listen. The moment you declare what you wish, what you want, the moment you do that, everything that is opposite of that will show up. Because in order for you to appreciate the prosperity of Lotus and Bloom, Charmon, you first had to go through nobody believing in you. Tell me I'm lying. I know how this works. She ain't never told me that in her life. But I know, I know what I'm talking about. She had to go through a period where somebody said, stop that. Somebody who she trusted said, go, just do your job right. I ain't lying. I know how this works. Because the moment you, the moment Michelle declared, I'm going to be a big travel agency, she drew unto her, no, you're not. The moment Tempest declared, I'm going to be a big cybersecurity person, she drew unto her, no, you're not. You have to. Because Big U says, okay, Tempest, I love you so much. I'm going to give you the opposite. So when we finally pull this off, you're going to enjoy it. Everybody ain't ready for that truth. Number three. Everything that comes to you is a return of what comes from you. Here's another secret to success. Rise.com. Rise is an all-in-one system that makes online training easy to create, enjoyable to take, and simple to manage. With Rise, anyone can easily create guides, courses, and other training content. You can start from scratch or customize hundreds of rebuilt lessons helpful course templates, and gorgeous sample courses to build content even faster. Your learners will love RISE because RISE courses are beautiful, interactive, and engaging. Your managers will love RISE because RISE makes it fast and easy to create, distribute, and analyze online training. And your IT department will love RISE because it has everything your team needs to manage online training in one secure enterprise class system. So why you'll love RISE? By starting a third, a free 30-day trial at rise.com slash success. Again, that's rise.com slash success to start your 30-day free trial. R-I-S-E dot com slash success. If it came to you, it also came from, no, it first came from you. Ooh, I hate him. He always hating. That's because you a hater. I don't know why I can't get people to pay their bill on time. Because you don't ever pay your bills on time. All my customers pay their bills on time. 
don't know why I can't get black people to support me. It's a bunch of black people on this phone call, ain't it? Paying money. Because I support black people. I wish I could build with somebody. That's because you keep tearing down somebody's building. That's why you can't find nobody to build with. Plant gossip, you get gossip. Plant prosperity, you get prosperity. Everything in your life, everything in your life came from your vibration. You have nothing in your life you ain't pushed out first. I'm, I'm walking too hard that skin. The truth is, I'm about to get harder. Number four. The outside world you think you experience moves simultaneously with the inside world you're trying to avoid. I would explain that. I want to explain it. I'm not even going to explain it. I'm going to just tell you this here. The real world is not out here. It's in here. But I ain't going to bother nobody, Bastine. I ain't going to bother nobody. I'm going to go ahead and let them roll with that for sake of time. Number five. Your outside world behaves as you. Don't let it make you react to it. Oh, I'm talking. Somebody needed this word up on the day. The outside word. This, this, how y'all treat me is according to my level of self-esteem. Oh, suck it, duck it. A man one of y'all gonna treat me less than I see me. Therefore, if you treat me like garbage, I see me like garbage. Help me, somebody. Do you understand? You only gonna treat me like I see me. You treat me with respect, that's because I respect myself. You play me, that's because I play myself. However you treat me is how I see me. And what I bet not do, allow me that colloquialism, is react to how you treat me. Did you see what I just did there? If, I, if you treated me wrong, I instantly know I treat me wrong. And since I know I treat me wrong, what I'm not going to do is keep up that cycle and let you make me treat you wrong so I can keep treating me wrong. Everything outside is what's inside. But you better not react to what's outside. Because, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, put, I spent a little money on that care. I had to go ahead and I, I had to go ahead and turn one whole part of the office into, you know, so I just had to go ahead and make them make that work. Every single thing that reacts in you came from you, but you better not react to it because water only destroys a ship when the stuff on outside of the boat gets inside the boat. That's when you drown. You'll never drown with dry lungs. You drown when water gets inside of you. Don't react to water. Keep that water out there. My, 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 my. First thing I told you was you always get what you want. Second thing I told you was is, you know, even if it's at the opposite of what you wish, Chris. Third thing I said was everything that comes to you is a return of what comes out of you. Fourth thing I said is the outside world that you think you experience is simultaneously moving with your inside world. Didn't even explain that. Fifth thing I said to you is your outside world behaves as you don't react to it. So the sixth thing I'm going to tell you is having a lot of things does not make you divine. Check your ego. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't wait for that. 
just because you got stuff don't mean you are stuff. Because if you ain't got harmony in your relationships, you ain't poop emoji. You go ahead and translate that to what I really want to say. You understand. You ain't poop emoji. Prosperity is wellness on all sides. Friends, health, family. Please know, as I sit here with my sexy chocolate self, and I'm the sexiest man alive, let me tell you, okay? I ain't nobody. Idris Elba is the only man finer than me. You understand? The only man on planet Earth finer than me. Idris Elba. It's Idris Elba number one. I'm number two. That's it. Okay? Even I'm attracted to Idris Elba. That's a fine brother. I need to get me a, I need to get me an English accent. You understand? Besides that, I understand that don't none of that mean nothing if don't nobody like me. Don't none of that mean nothing. I'm woke. But I can't be woke and broke. I can't be poor and conscious. I can't be a poor, righteous teacher. I can't be rich and mean. It all has a wholeness about it, which is the word that integrity comes from. Wholeness. I have to be complete. If you talk to me and don't feel better after you talk to me, I've done a wrong job that day. That's just how it is. You don't get to stand in judgment at now or ever, but it will come back to haunt you. Next thing I want to tell you about is getting a large blessing doesn't mean that you just got blessed. Check your ego. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I, did, I, did I bust your bubble? Just because you got stuff don't mean you blessed. And just because you just got your little car don't mean you blessed. Blessed is consistency. Imagine a tree for a second, and the tree got a thousand pound fruit on it. What's that got to do with the health of the tree if all the other tree is barren? You need all fruit on all limbs. If you just got blessed and you ain't got fruit on all your limbs, just call that God's grace because that's exactly what happened to you because you ain't blessed. You just got mercy. If you're just joining us, what I'm talking about is everything's your fault. Always been your fault. Has always been your fault. Will be your fault. And the last thing I want to put in your hearing is everything that happens to you is because of karma. Karma is a real thing. It's an Eastern understanding. It's also in your West, it's, it's also in your Eastern religious text that you did snatched and took over in the West. You reap what you sow. That's in there. It's, if that scene is it still in there, or did I did I run to everybody Bibles and take it out? Did I? It's still in there, huh? All right. So far, I did. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I, so I ain't with all y'all Bibles and snatched it out last night. You reap what you sow. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I know I'm fast, but I ain't got to go to everybody Bible. It's still in there. It's in there. You reap what you sow. That's the same thing as law of attraction. That's the same thing as karma. You just quibbling over words. Let me bless thee. Everything in your life right now is a consequence of karma. You're blessed because of your karma. You're cursed because of your karma. What you have put out has come back. Therefore, if you didn't believe anything I said, it's all right. Because karma doesn't care if you believe. Karma says if Sharmon does right by people, we would do right by her company. <sighs> if Sharmon does right by her daughter, we would do right by her dream. All right, they all mad at me right now. That's all right. 
I want to. Does anybody mind if I bring up what is called the Christian text? I just want to do it just for a second, if that's okay. Just a sacred text. I don't mean to be Christianity or Christian here. Just let. Just allow me to bring up the sacred text, and I really want to talk about a text that gets quoted a lot just to oppress women. If you can just spot show of hands, if you've seen people oppress women in the 21st century, could you just raise your hand, flash your camera for me, just for a second, just for a second, just, just, just please, if it's okay. okay. Thank you very much. If you've seen religion, excuse me, if you've seen people try to use religion to oppress women, could you please raise your hand? So it's okay, I got my hand up first. It's okay, we're not talking about religion, we just said, okay, I had people cut the camera on for that one. <laughs> I know that's right, Patricia. I ain't mad at you. Like, yes, child. It just just happened yesterday. I understand. All right. <laughs> I understand. I want to show you something, and I'm done. It applies to men and women, but it's tenderly tough, is what my old pastor would say. He was a tree stump preacher. He, I mean, he was one of them guys that he'd go to a tree stump and just start talking about the word of God for no reason at all. He just, he just, just, he, he, he was socks and sandals. Y'all know which one I'm preaching I'm talking about? The, the black church socks and sandals. Open toe sandals, too, with, 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 them, with them Izod shorts on and that pot belly. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And that must just be in the South. That's all right. That's all right, though. You know what I'm talking about, brother. If you're in the South, you know what I'm talking about. That kind of preacher. Just being Walmart. Hey, what's going on, Pastor? Oh, God, be good to me. God, Pastor, I ain't want to hear nothing about that now. I ain't want to hear nothing about that, okay? I'm talking about that, that kind of preacher. Listen, let me bless you real quick. How many of you have ever heard the text, you know, a woman, ought, well, have you ever heard somebody say, a woman ought to obey her husband? A woman ought to obey the man? Come on, it's all right, it's all right, it's, a, it's in there. Ain't nothing wrong with that, it's in there. In fact, it's seven verses long. It's in First Peter, third chapter, seven verses. But you know what we like to do, Tempest? Ignore that eighth verse. Can I teach y'all about karma? Let me go ahead and do it now. That eighth verse says, excuse me, that seventh verse says, likewise, Antonio. I'm, I'm highlighting it it's right there. It just say husband, but we're going to put my name in there. Is that all right? Can we put my name? Live with your wives in an understanding way. Show honor to the woman as a weaker vessel. Watch this. This is the scary part. Since they are heirs, so that your prayers may not be hindered. That's the only part you need to focus on. Everything I said to these women in verses one through six, if you don't do it too, I'm a Tear that company up you just started. Help me, somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm landing the plane, Michelle. You, you see me? My cadence is speeding up. I'm landing. The runway's clear. Everything they ever did to you, Abby, if they don't come back and apologize and respect that, their prayers is going to be hindered. I'm, I'm, my cadence is picking up, that thing. Every single thing. God is not asleep now. You may be asleep. They may be asleep. But if I fool around and disrespect Bastine, God is going to tell, karma is going to say, dreams, don't you go to Antonio until he do right by Bastine. That's all I want to talk about. I just want to bring up some karma. Until you do right by your brother and sister, you forfeit your dreams every time. You ain't got to believe me. As we end, it's right here. If you don't do it, your prayers will be hindered. Now, in all seriousness, I don't know about you, Charmaine, but I ain't got time to lose out on my dream because I didn't respect you. At the very least, I'm going to let you disrespect me. But I'm not forfeiting my dream because I didn't have the discipline to respect you. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can't plan better. You can 
dominate. We got about 15 minutes for Q&A. If y'all want to go ahead and respond back. Hi, hi guys. <laughs> I, just, I, <laughs> I just want to apologize for coming in so late, honestly. I just want to apologize. I did, I did not even realize that there was a Zoom call at six. I just checked my phone now and I was like, oh snap. And, and I, I never teach these Zoom it. calls. They let me <laughs> loose today. This is my third time in five years. They let me loose. Yeah, so I, I just heard the tail end of what Antonio was saying, and I'm already blessed. I'm already resonating with the message. I, I mean, I, I've, had, I've had my share. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know what was talked about before then, but from the tail end of what Antonio said, trust me, I've had my share of family, relatives, even even siblings, even siblings, you know, that just come at you in ways that make you wonder what what the issue is really. But I know I know that God is faithful. I know that God is faithful. And I try my best. I because I do I really do believe in karma. Watch what you sow, you reap. If you treat That's people right. badly, it's gonna come back to you. You know, so I try my best to, to be good and kind to people, even, even when I'm angry, even when I'm resentful, even when I'm hurt. I just try to keep it, I still try to be courteous and respectful, even when you come at me. But there's, there's been so much pent up aggression and resentment that I've had, you know, for certain people that have come at me, have come at my husband, have come at our dreams, funny. And um, yeah, so. Sorry, guys. Sorry for no, that's good. That's good. You're right. Look, karma is just a word. Now, you can put a principle on it, a scripture on it. It's just a word. It don't mean that it ain't a law. You plant poison, you get poison. Come on, Kiara. I'm listening. Um, I read something the other day, and it said, ask God for a sign. Ask God for a confirmation. So when I read that, I was like, well what do I really need to be asking for a confirmation on right now? So I started thinking and I just asked God, like, can you show me that I'm on the right path of what I'm trying to do? Because everything is so different now. Mm. And I was like, unsure if I was focused, but the way my brain, my, my thought process was going, I was very strategic in how I handle everything on my way to focus on, on what I need to be doing. So it was just God's way of everything you're saying. I'm proud to say that I think this way and I actually see the manifestation it's of tough. this type of thought process. So, and, I, and I've taken things like um, when I was saying uh, my merchandise got stolen and I wanted to be upset and you, you said something that sticks with me every single day. And that was, will you, you choose prosperity or you choose that? Mm -hmm. And that's how I look at everything in life. So it's just like, I understand when the troubling times are coming or when the rough to all of my coffee drinkers out there, what if your morning coffee supported girls going to school? With Gorongosa Coffee's Girls Run the World Bling, you can do just that. Each bag equals a day of education for a young woman in Mozambique. The aroma when you first start brewing it, when it hits you, it just wakes you up and gets you ready for the day. And the flavor itself is even smoother. So you can use our code A. T-S for 20% off your first order at gorongosacoffee.com. That's G-O-R-O-N-G-O-S-A coffee.com for premium coffee with real impact. Let me just say to you, ladies and gentlemen, Deanna just made me the most fantastic cup of coffee and we're both drinking it. And the flavor is robust. It's just really good and it smells great. So I'm really excited to be sharing this with you now back to me sipping some more coffee patches hit i don't need to let them affect me i just mm -hmm. need to understand what they are and that allows me to carry myself in such a way that it's just like easy peasy <laughs> life is not mm -hmm. that hard anymore and the blessings are coming and i also see what i need to work on and i'm calm enough to work on it so that i'm making progress in that too so I just resonated with that whole message. I just felt like that was the confirmation for God to be like, look how much you've changed. Look how much your thought process has shifted and look what's there that was already yours. Mm, 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 mm. That girl preaching, ain't she? Mm, mm, mm. Congratulations to you for choosing prosperity. Come on, Michelle Black. I know you're there. Come on, let me hear from you. 
So I would definitely have to say that everything that you said today, there's a scripture behind everything that you said, um, especially the part where um, you was like, you, you put it in third, ten, um, third, whatever you put it in. You were saying, dream, don't bless, you know, I used to be Michelle until she treats Shaman mm -hmm. right. Well, I mean, even the word of God says that. He said, bless those that curse you. Um, bless your enemy. You know, do good unto them. <laughs> you know, it's never been, oh, because they hurt me, I can't help them. Um, that's when you're supposed to help them, just so, mm. so that they could see the God that lives in you and, regard, and let them know, regardless of what you do to me, I'm still going to be successful. I'm still going to be prosperous. I'm still going to be wealthy. And the thing about it is you just added to that because I'm still blessing you even though you treat me wrong. So I'm showing God I can still I can bless you. Oh, and on another thing about that submitting stuff. Um, yeah, the Bible does say that. However, to all the men out there, the Bible does say, love your wife as God loves the church. And that's a whole lot of loving. So I just thought I'd put that <laughs> look, use that scripture too. I thought I'd put that out there, but I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Um you, yeah, you do have to bless your enemy. It may take some time to forgive them because you have to forgive them. Forgive by itself is a sin and it'll, it'll eat you alive. But when you forgive somebody, um you you would conquer an obstacle. You know, so make sure you forgive them wholeheartedly. And if they have need of, and God tell you to bless them and help them, you better do what you got to do because you hold your own self back. And I'm glad you said it. You hold your own self back when you know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. That's right. And that's even that's even helping those that do you wrong. That's right. That's right. So appreciate your feedback. 2015, 14. I was in a class called Baptist Traditions in Houston Baptist University. It's something they make you take. You can be Muslim, you can be Greek, you can be an alien. You're gonna take Baptist Traditions at Houston Baptist University. And I waited till my senior year. And old man, he was the president of Texas Baptist. Oh, how, how would y'all know this? Think of the Southern Baptist convention okay just something like that 60 year old plus six foot 12 white guy and he asked the class class open the line he ain't asked for no role he ain't asked you to introduce yourself he ain't go no syllabus he said class what should you base your marriage on and everybody including me said love and he said, wrong. He was just as charismatic and direct as me. And I hated every bit of it. Hey, he ain't just I'm wrong. You ain't gonna tell me I'm wrong. And he said, no. You base your marriage off forgiveness. Because love is too volatile. Forgiveness is the greatest form of love. Now, you know I'm telling the truth, and I'm just 39 years old. I don't know how to talk that wise. Okay? That ain't, I'm too young for that wisdom, Bastine. That ain't come from somebody my age. You understand? <laughs> that came from somebody far older than me. But it's to Michelle's point. To forgive is to love. And you can't love God and hate your cousin. Can't do both. I'm the next person who wants to communicate upon this here recorded line. Please go ahead. Sorry, can I can I say something again? You Sorry, sure I, can. <laughs> um, I I just a few months ago there was this little there was this um drama with Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith about the whole entanglement drama. And I, I've never really been one of those people who's like a, a, a trend. I never, I never follow trends. I'm not one of those people who's like on top of trends. So I didn't, I just ignored the whole drama. But today I was kind of like just doing some research for um, my, my business, my life coaching 
and I decided to just go in and, and do some research on the whole drama. And I, I listened to the song by August Alsina, the guy who allegedly Jada Pinkett had an entanglement with. And, you know, it was just so interesting because, you know, I, I just was trying to, like, just do just outplay the whole situation and the fact that in spite of all the drama that happened will smith you know had he, he talked about how he had made this commitment when he was marrying jada that divorce is not an option and whatever happens in the marriage we're going to work our way through it and so when you mention forgiveness and how forgiveness is what really holds a marriage together um that that was that was just what came to my mind. The fact that in spite of what she had done, he was able to forgive her and and still love her and still embrace her, knowing that they are they are tied together by marriage. Yeah, that was a deep situation, and 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 then that King Will Smith got on national TV, a Grammy nominated show. And took that embarrassment and let Black Twitter and all sorts of IG memes go after him, and I ain't said nothing in return. Talk about forgiveness. I'll watch every Will Smith movie <laughs> until death, off the general principle of his level of forgiveness someone he's committed to. I've got nothing to say about, nothing negative to say about anybody, but just to, to your point, to highlight this level of forgiveness. Not that he was attempting to win my allegiance, Bastine, but he sure got it. He sure got it. Anybody else? Got a time for a few more? Everything is always your fault? Ain't gonna never stop being? Uh-oh, Charmone, I see you. Um, I, I, I wasn't planning on getting on this call because I have some schoolwork to do, uh -huh. but, um, something urged me to jump on and I said, I'm just going to be on for a few minutes, but, um, here I am, I'm, I'm still on. And the thing that, that caught my ear was, um, when you mentioned about the boat and keeping the water outside of the boat or you yeah, said that's what I you said. can't you can't drown with dry lungs mm. and i recently but like, i'm a private person i don't i don't let a lot of people get close to me um i guess because of all the times i've been hurt in the past but trying to mature out of that i allow you know, people to get a little close to me. And recently I had one person, because I refused to do what they wanted me to do, uh, was having a conversation on the phone. They hung up on me um, and then refused to take my call. And then I had another person kind of like snap on me. And my first instinct is to return what was done to me. So when you started talking about the boat and the water, it um, just made me reflect on how I responded to those two people. And one person, you know, I kind of forgave them, not to them, but to myself, I forgave them so I can continue to, um, I guess, be friends. But the other person, I guess it hurt me a little deeper. So I blocked them on Facebook and deleted them out my phone. But after hearing what you said, um, I'm seeing that those weren't the proper ways of responding. So I, I, I feel like I need to go back and, and put them back in my phone and you know, unblock them and and just forgive no them and just keep keep moving on. Oh, no, you don't have to put them back in your phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
you can unblock them, you know, and all that. But they, you just be like, hello, I do. I just want to come, be woman enough to come to you and apologize for our last conversation we uh-huh. had. Um, the phone was disconnected, whether you hung up or not. I am woman enough to say, please forgive me if I offended you in any kind of way and leave it as that. Thank you. Talk to you soon and keep on moving. They can kick rocks. But as long as you ask for forgiveness, even though you didn't hurt them because you didn't do what they say, just ask for forgiveness and keep on moving. Okay. That's actually solid advice. Let me ask you a question. With this person, doesn't matter what you feel or all that stuff. Let me just ask you a real question. Do you plan on working with them towards your no. dream? Oh, wait, then, then, then what Michelle said is what is. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, <laughs> you can, if you don't play it, did y'all see how fast she said? Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. If you're not going to work with them 10 years from now, towards your dream, Mm-mm. then you don't have to have them in your phone. Okay. Let me bless all y'all. Only associate with people helping you get to your supreme destiny. All others, wave at. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Just, <laughs> come on, Vastine. Oh, yeah. I, if, you really brought it on tonight, Antonio. You really did. Powerful. They don't, they don't let me talk much here, so I had to go ahead and chop some heads off. Yeah, I, I just like to add these words. They're not my words, of course, but but it has become a guiding principle in my life. Um, first is don't feed nothing holy to the dogs. That's scriptural. Feed nothing holy to the dogs. Because a dog's nature is, is that he will always turn to his vomit. That's scriptural. And that's, is one of the big detriments. And, and you said it best, you know, we, we create everything. It's all, all of our decisions. We create everything around us. And a lot of, and a lot of the times we, we just aren't aware that we're feeding, we're feeding the dogs in our lives. And I'm not calling people dogs, but it is the behavior of a dog. And that is, that is all biblical scripture. I'm, I'm, I'm not bringing up anything that's new, uh, some coinage of words. But a minute ago, I had to answer my doorbell because my, uh, my neighbor was bringing us dinner. My neighbor cooked dinner for us. And I have found that another principle that I, I know that I'm living by is that I have been young and now I'm old and I am old and never have I seen the seeds of the righteous beg for bread. It, this is a give and take thing we have. You know, we call it karma, we call these all these things, but and I'll close what I'm gonna say by saying this. I've learned in my life that catch thy bread upon the water. Because when you catch a piece of bread, a small piece, it will feed a small fish. And that small fish will feed a larger fish. And that fish will feed an even larger fish. And that's how I see my blessings. And I can't count my blessings. Uh, I've enjoyed virtually a rich life with no money. Because God has made my enemy my footstool. God has blessed me more through my enemies than he have my friends. And I want to thank you because it, it puts everything in perspective. It is personal. The spiritual walk is personal. It's for everyone. It's for all of us. And that, yes, we have to learn how to forgive. Because if I can't forgive you, God won't forgive me. Thank you, Antonio. Powell. Very welcome. <clears throat> Very welcome. I'll leave you all with this here, and we're going to jump on the Bureau of Dominant Speakers right after this here. You'll have it in your messenger groups. My life, I'm going to say this more than once, y'all. I'm going to repeat it until people receive it. My life did not change. Now, nah, let me say it the way I want to say it. <laughs> God didn't jump on my side until I start loving people 
more than I loved him. You can parse that any way you want to. You can try to correct me. It's all good. You can quibble. It'll just be semantics. There's a objective truth in there. Until I treated people better than my view of God, I received no prosperity. I don't have to protect a single thing that I have. Everything I have, other people will fight for it because you got them messed up that you could have do me wrong. I don't have to protect it. Because Abby was more God to me than me just walking in the church, going through the practice motions to be to get filled up so I can go be a heathen throughout the week. I'm just gonna say it how I wanted to say it, Charmon. <clears throat> you understand. Until I treated people, universe enemies, racist, all of them, exes, until I treated people, however I viewed the God I serve, until I treated them like God, I didn't get prosperity. I didn't. Patricia said, that's a great reminder. I've learned if I want to be a harvest, I need to plant better seeds. I'm telling y'all, until I loved people, I did not get to enter into my master's joy. Until I was faithful to the few, I was not able to be ruler over many and there's a part after that that says now you serve it come on in to the joy of your master i spent first half of my life in my joy and my joy is full of poison now i like that great joy source joy the joy that can guarantee somebody, I'm never going to listen. Whatever that happened there, I ain't going to do it. I guarantee you, I don't know how this is going to go. All I know is, I'm not going to be the one to mess it up. Katrina, you unmuted your mic. Last words on me. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, hello to everyone. Um, this is my first time on a call, so this, this was very exciting and very um, educational. The ladies do better than me. That's why they don't do Do they? Do. Okay, yes. well, I look yes. forward to more. I look forward to more. I do want to say that a lot of times we can't forgive people. It's because we didn't process what happened to us in a positive way. A lot of times we have our own emotions that get in the way. And a lot of those emotions string from childhood hurt traumas, all types of things that we all have encountered in life. But when we can't forgive someone, it's because we haven't been, um, what's the word for that? We haven't been healed from certain areas in our own life. The most important thing is to see the God in them the way that you see the God in you. And if you don't see the God in you, then that's probably why you can't forgive the way that you need to. Overall, it does, the word of God does say that love conquers all. Not love when you want to, because somebody was good to you, because they have what you need. No, no, no. To love someone is to love yourself. The word also says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So in taking that scripture, God is in you. So why would you want to treat someone else 
wrong or have unforgiveness and when they do it to you why do you take such offense to it you're supposed to always walk in a forgiving spirit understand that we all are infallible we all make mistakes when i was in um what is that sunday school years ago little girl like punching cookies my favorite scripture we always had to use a scripture and it was romans 3 23 for we all have fallen short of the glory of god we all have so there may be somebody that might be an educated person that may do wrong somebody who not even is educated it doesn't matter we are infallible we all will make mistakes and when we do make mistakes we want forgiveness so we should also be so easily easily i'm not saying right away when it happens but i'm saying understanding processing what has happened why the situation went the way it went and why you forgive that person forgive yourself because we are hard on ourselves all the time especially when you're trying to treat people right and they treat you wrong and we're always wondering did i say something wrong that might offend that individual just process it in a positive way and then you're able to look at the situation for what it is and you'll you'll be so easily to say i forgive you or would you forgive me because a lot of times when i'm when i have dealt with conflict with people it was a misunderstanding that I needed to talk to them about at that time. And I handled it in a very loving way. I didn't say Christ-like way because I'm gonna tell you, I done seen a lot of Christians who say they're Christians and they are the meanest jokers, okay? No offense, I'm sorry. They are the meanest jokers. They will cuss you out and then say hallelujah right after it. So I'm not talking about them type of folks. I'm talking about the people that have done the work within themselves that really want to allow the God in them to shine forth the ones that know what it feels like to be hurt. So they won't hurt someone else, but they will love them just as much as they love God, as Antonio stated. So I leave all of that on your plate tonight to say, love conquers all, be quick to forgive. And at the end of the day, remember, yeah, you're human, but at the same time, you're also supernatural as well. Sounds good to me. I sure appreciate you. We'll be jumping to another call in 30 seconds. I don't know much about the word of God. I just know that God don't let me love God more than I love Bastille. That I do know. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can't plant better. You can dominate. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you on the next call. We ready. It's about to go down. I'm about to hand out some new assignments. So you're going to love your speaker rotation. All right, everybody. Have a great one. I'm not sure if you already know this, but you're already absolutely perfect. You're already absolutely great. And you're already living in massive abundance. The most important things that you have is not what you have. It's not what you do. It's what you know. Because the people who do know what you need to know to lead the middle class, they're in the top 1%. And they control 96% of the world's income. 97% of this world is trading time for money. And that is not the way to become rich. It's not the way to become wealthy. And it is absolutely not the way to leave the middle class. There are 7.8 billion people in the world right now. And they all want to learn how to make money and how to leave the middle class. But the way to become a master at anything is to learn all the rules and then bend them to your faith. Right now in this world, there are 2,057 billionaires, right now. So if you think becoming a billionaire is, a, is it possible, that's 2,057 people that have already proved that impossibility incorrect. And if you think that's crazy, there are 46.8 million millionaires in the world, worldwide right now. Now think about that. 46.8 million millionaires, and that number grows 1,730 millionaires every single day. Money is everywhere. You don't need to max out your credit cards. You don't need to borrow from granddad and grandma. Just look behind me. Look at all the wealth sitting behind me in this junkyard. It's insane how much money is everywhere, and you don't need to go out there and beg, bar, and steal to get it. You just need to know the rules of making money and how to leave the middle class. 
Essentially, all you need to know is the algorithm of making money, the rules of making money. All you need to know is what to do and how to do it, and you can leave the middle class. Any industry, yoga, golf, underwater basket weaving, clipping fingernails, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is know how to do it, how to get it done, and then find somebody to teach you how to do it, how to get it done, and you will be able to leave the middle class. If you're not getting my point, it's real simple. Whatever you have up here, as long as you understand the rules of leaving the middle class, as long as you understand how to get money, you can take what's up here and get wealthy for what you already have. Right now, the very thing you know up here is already being searched a thousand times a second on Google. Someone right now, actually 1,730 people right now, are gonna become a millionaire from the stuff that you have in your head. Why can't this be you? I mean, it's 1,730 people with your ideas that are no better than you, that are gonna leave the middle class, become a millionaire. Why are you not next? So how do we do this? How do we take what you know and apply it to objective money-making secrets and then allow you to leave the middle class? How do we take you from where you are and let you escape to where you wanna go? So how do we make all this money or take all this knowledge from the Warren Buffers, from Elon Musk, how do we take everything that everyone before you has done and how do we take all of that and then put it in your head so you can leave a legacy for your family? My name is Antonio T. Smith Jr. 32 years ago, I lived in a trash can. That's right, from six to 14, I had no running water, no electricity, no anything. And somehow I'm in the top 1% today. Not because I had the right background, not because I had a silver spoon in my mouth, simply because being homeless made me learn how to make money. I retired when I was 29 years old. I'm more than likely younger than you. I'm one of the top 1% income earners in one of the richest countries in the world. What I learned how to do when I was six years old was learn how to generate enough money to eat some cookies so I wouldn't die to death from starvation. From there, I learned how to go from cookies to a meal from a meal to clothes, to clothes, to shelter, to everything else that supplied my necessary needs. When I was six, I was forced to learn how to make money, and now that's what I'm gonna do and help you do. I've seen amazing results. I have my own economy, I've homeschooled my own children, and I wrote a book that teaches you every single thing that I know about making money, every single thing that other people know about making money, and most importantly, all the stuff that we don't tell you. Because the truth is, and you know it like I know it, the most honest, the most hardworking, unselfish people on planet Earth live in the middle class. Yet, your honesty, your unselfishness, your devout religion going self is not enough to get to the top 1% and that's not fair. The second half of my life has been not about how much money I make, but how I will be remembered from all the money that I have made. And I've been trying to teach everybody how to get out the middle class. I'm the crazy guy famous on the internet for trying to create 100,000 millionaires. I've created eight so far. I got a ninth one on the way, all the way from India. That's pretty cool. And what I want to tell you is something very simple. It's been hard. It's been absolutely hard to help people leave the middle class, not because of the people, because the system would rather keep you being someone else's money instead of you having your own economy and having the money come find and flow to you. It was frustrating because I knew that anybody can make money. And if you knew what I knew, you would change your life. Over the last few years, I built a large following of over half a million people every month that pay me to actually for me to give them advice. Well, that's been exciting for me. And the cool thing is I've created thousands of six-figure earners. I've created millionaires. I've created people who can live their dreams and hold on to their legacies. And now my eyes are on you to create you to what you need to be great. I have been teaching my principles and these principles to hundreds of thousands of people around the world, every country, all continents, 
and anyone who has taken them seriously, written them down and applied them, have a 100% success rate of leaving the middle class. I've taught these secrets to my following and my inner network, and I've watched them go from four figures to five figures, five figures to six figures, seven figures all the way to eight. Everything that I've ever learned Everything I've ever learned from millionaire mentors, billionaire mentors, and everything I learned from being homeless, and everything that got me into the top 1%, I have placed inside of a book. To date, it is the longest book that I've ever written, the most best book that I've ever written, and that book is called The Richest Man and the Trash Can, and I'm offering it to you today for free. This book is gonna show you how to become wealthy into the top 1% and leave the middle class. This book is gonna give you a step-by-step -step plan if you're 30 years old, all the way to 70 years old, how to get into the top 1%. If you're a teenager, how to get to the top 1%. If you're a millennial, how to get to the top 1%. It's gonna teach you how to make six figures immediately, teach you how to get to a million dollars immediately, and all that good stuff. Plus, I'm gonna give you the 36 objective laws of leaving the middle class. Plus, I'm gonna give you every last one of my secrets that have made me rich. You have to understand that leaving the middle class is the most important fight that you're gonna have in your life. And to be honest with you, and you can kind of relate to this, it almost takes $450,000 a year just to be broke in America. And that's just in America. If you don't leave the middle class, which is actually an illusion, then you are gonna have a really hard time. Think about it for a second. Some of, most of you are gonna be watching this are gonna be baby boomers, and you've been sold a bad check. They lied to you. Your retirement was not enough for you to live comfortable, and I'm gonna give you this book for free so you can figure out how to triple your retirement and then quadruple your retirement, and then as Grant Cardone would say, 10 extra retirement so you can live the life that's worthy of you. I want you to remember that leaving the middle class is the most important battle that you could ever face in your entire life, especially for your family. So consider this video, this book, your friendly tap on the shoulder. I want to send you a free copy of this book because I believe that abundance is your birthright. I believe that abundance is freedom. And I believe that this book is right for you. In fact, I believe in that so much that I will send you the book for free. All you have to do is cover the cost of shipping. I'll eat the cost. I'll take the loss. And all you have to do is get the book and dominate your reality right now and apply the principles so you can be the best person for your life that is yours. Fill out the form sitting right there to the right. Go ahead, dominate your reality. I can't wait to send you my book. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to have you as someone that's been on the journey with me. Antonio T. Smith Jr., you can plant better. You can dominate.